The following is brought to you by Timmins Gold Corp. Visit them online at TimminsGold.com. Welcome to Cambridge House Live. I'm Vanessa Collette here at the Sprott Symposium, and I'm joined by Brent Cook, author of Exploration Insights. Welcome, Brent, and nice to see you again. Glad to be here. Now, Brent, you've said in our last discussion uh, in June that you were expecting the Great Dust Bowl of 2014. How ugly has it been? Well, we've, we've had a few rain showers. Uh, <laughs> it hasn't been near as, as tough as I expected. We've seen the market rise uh, in general, you know, in, into June and into July a bit as well. It's starting to plateau off again. This is the third time in three years that we've seen rises like this. And we'll see if it continues. I still think we're bouncing along bottom. Okay. And until the majors start actually, mining companies start making real money, I think it's going to be a tough, a tough crawl, uh, probably for the rest of this year. What do you think needs to happen still? Well, I think what is going to happen is that the, the, the majors are right now cutting back everywhere they can in order to show the investment community that they're profitable or can be profitable. What that means is they're cutting out uh, a lot of the development work and um, exploration and maintenance that has to be done. So coming the next year or two, they are going to rake up and recognize that they need new deposits to replace what they're, they've mined and what mining and that there are very few out there. And that, I think, is what's going to wake up the sector, uh, the junior sector in particular, is that we've got to find these things. It takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of money to do so. So I think that's what's going to wake it up. So the larger companies are going to have to start replenishing their reserves and acquiring the smaller companies? Yes, or? for sure. Acquiring the few legitimate profitable deposits. I mean, consider we're burning through, on average, one Bingham Canyon gold copper mine a year and one Carlin trend a year. That's how much production there is. We're not finding one of those every year. Right, right. Now you've said that you're not so particular to any metal, but more it's more about the deposit. So can you elaborate on that a little bit? Really, all I want to do, and this is what I do in my letter, is try and identify the people, the projects that will be in the lowest, say, third of all in production costs and capex costs. I only want things that are going to make money. Right. And that's this is what you advise people is how to find these best people and projects in your letter. Sort of. I mean, I don't advise anybody to do anything. I just tell people what I'm doing with my money and they can make up their own decisions. I mean, we've got 20 companies in the letter and it runs from the very early stage exploration through to um, advanced development projects. Now, there's a lot of new investors that have been coming to the sector. What's the risk for someone new to be diluted out in the long term? And how can you mitigate that risk? That's, that's a really good question, and it's, it's a complex answer. I think number one in the junior sector we're talking about is you need to uh, get to know management. Uh, they need to be sincere, honest, committed to that project or company, and they need to make their big money if you do, or vice versa which is basically the share price go up. And then focus on what, what are they looking for and is it relevant, does it matter? Uh, I think this is the best time to be getting in. We're bouncing along bottom. When it picks up, it's gonna go wild. But be very, very cautious and view everything with a, a skeptical eye because there's a lot of, um, how do I say this? Uh, you wanna be careful who's telling you what and verify what they're saying makes sense. So how do you protect yourself against the dilution? You just look out for the best management team, or is there a time that you would look to get out of a stock before you yeah, are diluted? If you're talking about share dilution, you know, share uh, the dilution of the company, it does take money to explore. So you need to get a company with a project, and, and the management has some sense of what it's going to take to get to the next level, what the results have to look like, and how that is going to be important in terms of the valuation. Be it, you're starting off with a bunch of soil samples, that's positive. Okay, next step, trenches. Does the trenching back up or improve on the soil samples and confirm your thesis? Then the drilling, then you look at the drilling. Okay, now you've got to start thinking about what's the metallurgy? Uh, what's the capex going to be? What's the strip ratio going to be? What's the, you know, what's the infrastructure like? So all those things come in and if, if, 
each successive batch of results supports your thesis that this thing makes money, they should be able to raise money at a higher price. Absolutely. Now, jurisdiction is a big part of a mine's success. Are there any jurisdictions that are standing out to you more, becoming more attractive or less attractive these days? Certainly, West Africa has been very positive. Uh, Burkina Faso, I think Mali is a good place, Ghana is a good place, Chile is good, Peru is good, Mexico is good, parts of the U.S., parts of Canada. Um, you know, there's a lot of places that are worth looking and you can discover and develop a mine. Eastern, Eastern Europe and Serbia. So there are a lot of places that you can do that, but you can't take a country on the whole and say it's great because it comes down to the provincial level, as in, you know, there's certain provinces in Peru that you're just not going to build anything no matter what. Right. Are you still as much of a fan of the prospect generator model? I am, because that addresses the dilution problem. Uh, okay. In that they get partners to fund their exploration, which means we as investors or shareholders don't have to keep throwing money in uh, with an increase in the share capital of the, of the company. So it's, it's a very intelligent exploration model. Has it been changing at all? Aren't companies focusing more on their own core assets these days? Well, they have to because they're all running out of money. Um, the, the, the problem that they face is, or we face, is that too many of these companies don't recognize when their projects a bust and they keep sinking, you know, throwing bad money down the hole. Right. Or good money down a bad hole. Are there any companies that have stood out to you lately well, that you've been investing in? Uh, we, I just came back from Northern Ireland looking at uh, Northern Ireland looking at Del Radian. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah, and they've got a nice high-grade deposit in a permittable jurisdiction that I think works. Uh, so I like that one. And this is the team that founded Aurelian, correct? They're part of the same team that was involved in Aurelian, correct, which is a huge success. And Ireland is interesting. I mean, to think of Ireland as having a gold um, exactly. you know, jurisdiction. Yeah, I wouldn't have, yeah. you wouldn't think to Ireland, but yeah, it's, it's, it's good. So you did a site tour there? And yeah, I've been there twice now. Okay, and any other companies? Um, let's see, well, Pilot Gold is onto some interesting two interesting projects, one in Nevada and one in Turkey. They have yet to actually find something that gets me over the edge, but they've got 30 million bucks in the bank, very successful, competent team um, that does good work. So I, I'm in there as well. Sounds like you're looking for great teams and great deposits, and it was a pleasure having you on the show again, Brent. Thank you, anytime.